Hello. You've caught me in Hertfordshire on this occasion for my next Tour de Force tour. And where am I in the county? Well, this is Berkhamsted Castle. So I'm having a, a little look. It's uh, Morton Bailey, Norman in construction, but I think it's been a ruin since the 15th century. When I've finished here, I'm going to pop into town for lunch and then walk part of the Grand Union Canal towards Tring. But I, if, if the weather's nice, I shall pop up into the hills, hopefully for some views. I hope the sun will come up by then, before getting the train back from Tring Station. So keep your fingers crossed for me. So let's get cracking. And here is lunch. You may have passed through Berkhamsted at high speed on a train, the main line narrowly missing the ancient castle, the trains negotiating a sharp bend through the station, aided by their tilting mechanism. The castle was built shortly after 1066 for William the Conqueror's half-brother to obtain control of a key route between London and the Midlands, later served by the Grand Union Canal before the railway was built. This is also a major route for vehicles, the A41 road to Aylesbury now bypassing the town. The county of Hertfordshire, north of London, is swamped by large towns that have grown in size, but Berkhamsted, 26 miles from the capital, is a haven and today an important commuter town. Secreted within the Chiltern Hills, the Grand Union Canal passes through the town, its towpath serving as a quieter alternative to its busy high street. In high street is the main church of St. Peter's, bounded by a cluster of old buildings, particularly in Church Street. Parts of the church date back to the 13th century, but it was greatly altered during the Victorian era. It was starting to cloud over, and as the church was open, this was a good time to take a look, and there was no one about to interrupt my photography. The castle is open at any reasonable time. There was still some brightness in the sky for long views, and the vibrant colours of the autumn leaves helped to lift the picture. My hopes for a sunny afternoon were fading fast. Landscape photographers have to work with weather, and sometimes, as now, it meant changing plans. Fortunately, the canal was tree-lined for much of the way. In addition to concealing nearby buildings that were not always sympathetic to the surroundings, the trees also concealed the sky. When faced with a cloudy sky, even rain, the trick is to get rid of the sky. If included, it becomes the brightest part of the picture, drawing our eyes to a sky without much detail and in danger of overexposure. Therefore, the tree-lined canal helped. One of the bridges was a brilliant red, and so were some of the canal boats, a godsend when matters are working against the photographer. Under soft light, close-ups respond well. The plumage of swans is notorious for burning out to a pure white under brighter skies, but under a heavy cloud, the photographer stands a better chance of recording the subtle nuances of colour in their feathers. But you still have to spot meter if the surrounding water is dark. By now, I had abandoned the idea of taking a big view from the hills. Now, the railway was an 
entertaining diversion. Time for train spotting and for exercising the movie button finger. But you had to be quick, as by now the express trains out of Houston were travelling in excess of 100 miles an hour. I took several, and for the final shoot I captured two. The second a freight train contracted by Tesco to cut CO2 emissions. Now that should please the environment lobby, which I am happy to support when appropriate action is taken. I might do my shopping in Tesco a bit more often now.